What in the hell is that? Welcome, friends of the Greasy Shop Rag. Today we're going to take a look at a steel MS290 chainsaw. Uh, the customer wanted a tune-up. Look the saw over. So the first thing we do is look into the fuel tank and sure enough we find some water in there. Take a close look here you can see the the puddle of water moving around in the bottom of the fuel. So I know right away that this is going to get a carb rebuild. But we'll look the rest of the saw over you know and uh, don't you just love it when they bring it in with bird crap all over the top of it? Nice huh? Yeah, zero F's were given about the maintenance of this chainsaw because that air filter is, I may be the first one that ever looked at it. Spark plug's been in there for a while, so it's due for a tune-up. The good news is the cylinder looks good. So we're going to gap a spark plug, or at least check the gap on a spark plug. And uh, get that installed. I kind of paused there Click. for a minute because my camera moved on me and I just realized my gimbal battery went dead. We're going to push through this though, right? Okay, so we're going to pop the starter off of here, and we'll blow out all the debris that's in there, and we'll check the armature air gap on the ignition module. Then we're going to look under the other side and see what there is to find. Well, that clutch is awfully blue. It's been burnt, and you can see that the spur sprocket is worn pretty bad and while there is oil all over everything you can tell by the bar that at some point this thing wasn't oiling or they ran it without oil so there's a little bit of wear there and you'll see later that there's a lot of wear there on the tip of the bar so we found water in the fuel. We're going to move forward with removing the carburetor and putting a carb kit in it, cleaning that up. Before I do that, I want to pressure test that fuel line. These, uh, This vintage of steel saw with this style fuel line, uh, they usually have a crack in them and they usually got a hole. But for whatever reason, this one's still good. So we're going to send it. We will put a new fuel filter on it, though, before we send it. Now that we have uh, tested our fuel line and replaced our filter, we're going to remove the carburetor. What are you whining about back there? It's not time to eat yet. I don't miss a meal. You won't miss a meal. All right? I know. All right, we're struggling a little bit, but we're getting the carburetor off of there. And we're going to look inside the intake boot at the intake side of the piston and just see what that looks like that uh, air filter looked pretty plugged up but it didn't look like it was compromised but we just want to make sure that the skirt of that piston isn't worn from uh, dirt ingestion and it looked good good enough for this old saw so the carb footage that was deleted if you want to see carb rebuild footage go to my playlist and pick almost any other video I'm not getting sick of rebuilding carburetors, but I'm getting a little old posting videos of it. So we got the carburetor click. We got the torque back down. We'll put our throttle linkage back on. This 
just kind of sets in the linkage of the carburetor and it snaps into the throttle, I should say the trigger lever. This style steel chainsaw has always been really easy to work on. The starter assembly is going to go back on. All right, we'll dump some go-go -go juice into this bad boy and then uh, roll it over and take a look at that clutch side. So things look kind of burnt under there. The springs, they look okay. We're just going to let that slide. We do have a new clutch drum with a spur sprocket on it. We're going to put some grease on the end of the crankshaft. And we're also going to grease the clutch bearing. Got that on there. When you install this drum, you need to take a look at this little notch that's on the drum. And that needs to line up with the oiler. It's a wire. Um, but that, that wire for the oiler gear fits into that notch, and that's what drives the oil pump. Uh, when you're installing these E-clips, try to keep one finger on the clip at all times so that if it were to want to go flying, you can stop that from happening. So check out the tip of this bar. That thing is roached big time. So I've decided that what I want to do is just double check the oiler function of this saw. Uh, and if it does oil, we're going to put it all together and, and send it out. So that's all I got for you on the MS290 Chainsaw Tune-Up. Thanks for watching. Later.